Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to the Physical Sciences Division 2012 Diploma Ceremony. My name is Sheila Holman. I'm an Associate Dean in the Physical Sciences. And uh, this should be a very nice day. It's nice and cool in here, isn't it? Uh, we are here today to celebrate the achievements of our division students who are marching today. The ceremony this afternoon is a convocation a calling together, and it is a graduation, the elevation of raising up, if you will, to a higher degree. Occasions such as this afford an opportunity for us, all of us, deans, faculty, family, and friends, to honor publicly these earnest and hardworking young scientists and mathematicians, and to acknowledge their outstanding achievements. I believe Henry David Thoreau put it as well as anyone when he observed what is once well done is done forever. <laughs> and we'll remember that. <laughs> and of the hundreds of degrees conferred by President Zimmer earlier today, none is more richly deserved nor more enthusiastically presented as those we celebrate this afternoon. And for that reason, we are pleased and honored that you are with us as we honor these graduates today. Your presence makes this diploma ceremony truly a family affair. This is the division of the physical sciences and it would be a vain hope to think that you'll get away this afternoon without some didactic remarks about science or mathematics. On this occasion we're fortunate to have with us Benson Farb, professor in math and in the college, and Professor Farb pro proclaims himself an unapologetic mathematician. Thank you, Sheila. Um, by the way, before I, t before I speak, I just want to say the typo, I know how to spell unapologetic. The type, there's a typo, not due to me. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Anyway, um, graduates, I offer you a hearty congratulations. I wish I had the words to describe to your families the emotional ups and downs, the ridiculous amount of work, and the endless frustration that you must have experienced to have gotten this far. Thank you, Dean Pfefferman, for the opportunity to speak today. If I fail my goal of providing you all with some real food for thought, you should blame Pfefferman. <laughs> Since I'm a pure mathematician, which means I am as theoretical as it gets, uh, Dean Hefley suggested as a possible topic for this talk, why the square root of negative one is necessary. I could in take up this challenge of justifying pure science on its vast applicability. Indeed, the square root of negative one, which is the basic imaginary number, underlies a huge swath of modern technology, from the design of circuits, airplanes, and skyscrapers, to the construction of economic and financial models, maybe with apologies there, um, <laughs> to robotics. I've decided, however, to take the opposite point of view. I want to defend the value of basic science for its own sake. This is not just a philosophical exercise. You, like me, might derive great satisfaction from teaching. But I imagine that many of you have also grappled with your choice to spend your life in pursuit of knowledge, usually for its own sake, as opposed to finding immediately useful answers. Yes, Chicago is known for the question. That's all well and good in, in practice, but what about the theory? <laughs> it's a funny line, but I actually pr propose that this motto be embraced unapologetically. I should add that the official motto of the University of Chicago is Crescat Scientia Vita Excolator, let knowledge increase and so be human life enriched. I couldn't agree more. Why do we do what we do? Most of us start out in math or chemistry or whatever because we're good at it. We like the gold stars and the pats on the head. This is motivation enough for a while. Then we get a glimpse of profound ideas. This is life-changing. 
It's a difficult challenge that we can rise to. As the saying goes, after the mountains, more mountains. We become addicted to chasing understanding that often seems just out of reach. We, be, we become addicted to intellectual growth, to being stretched, and a few of us come to the realization that uh, we have to do this because we're no good at anything else. <laughs> but at some point, usually right in the middle of graduate school, we have a crisis of faith. If I spend my entire working life on basic science, on theory, will I have spent my time wisely? Will I have contributed anything to society? This panic is not lessened when I look at my thesis, relatively hyperbolic and automatic groups with applications to negatively curved manifolds. <laughs> at least there's applications in there. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's take a more extreme example. Two years ago, we managed to hire, I, I, Bob must have made a deal with the, with the devil or something, we managed to hire Nobel Cho, the most recent winner of the Fields Medal, which is the Nobel Prize of Mathematics. Cho proved a theorem that rated seventh on Time Magazine's list of top 10 scientific discoveries of 2009. Teleportation was eighth. So what exactly was this great discovery? Here's a statement of Cho's theorem. This is University of Chicago, as Sheila said. So I'm going to state the theorem. Theorem. Let O be a discrete valuation ring, complete over its residue field K. Let G be a reductive group scheme over O, whose Coxeter number is smaller than the characteristic of K. Let kappa be a given endoscopic representation of G, over O, and let H be the associated endoscopic group scheme. Okay, I better stop. I was told to keep this under five hours, so <laughs> I will stop. So I can't imagine what you all must think of that. And uh, one thing that comes to mind, though, is Horatio's reaction to seeing the ghost of Hamlet's father. And he, he saw the ghost and he said, oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. In answer, I can't do better than Hamlet. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. I agree with Hamlet. There are indeed more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophy. The language in Cho's theorem is complicated and sophisticated because he's describing truly complicated mathematical objects. Cho's 200-page masterpiece has been understood by a relatively small group of people, but that doesn't make it any less profound or beautiful. It just can't be simplified. Look, sometimes things are hard. But Cho's theory is changing the way we think about symmetry, about the superposition of waves, about amazingly delicate properties of numbers, and the surprising connections between all of these topics. This change might ripple out slowly, but deep ideas simply take a long time to be absorbed. A key point here is that the purpose of pure mathematics or of basic science in general is not the quick harvest. It is nothing less than an attempt to bring human thought and understanding to a higher level. It is an attempt to change not just what we think about the world, but how we think about it. The importance of this for human evolution is incalculable. As British physicist J.J. Thompson said, research in applied science leads to reforms. Research in pure science leads to revolutions. You, I guess I should look at the graduates there, you <laughs> are part of this grand enterprise. Most likely, you won't become rich. If you happen to, then please consider donating to the university. <laughs> you likely won't become famous. Your friends and family will never really understand what you do. But go back 104 years. The presidential election of 1908 dominated the news of the day. Who here knows who won the presidential election of 1908? This, this is Chicago. It was William Howard Taft. Okay. 
But the really important thing that happened in 1908, the event, unlike the Taft election, that will continue to affect humanity long after we're gone, took place right here at the University of Chicago. At that time, there was no generally accepted model of the atom. Many believe that charge, like mass, is infinitely divisible. The existence of subatomic particles, like electrons and protons, was not universally accepted. Robert Millikan changed everything, professor at University of Chicago at the time. Right near here, in Ryerson Hall, maybe in my office, I don't know, my office, Millikan performed an ingenious experiment on oil drops sprayed between charged plates. His main tool was an uh, actual sprayer from a perfume bottle, which he just bought at probably Marshall Fields. Um, but Millikan used his experiment to determine the charge and hence the mass of the electron. He determined the mass of the electron. He demonstrated that any electric charge is always a multiple of that fundamental value. In other words, charge is quantized. This shattered old beliefs. Out of the shards came quantum mechanics. Yes, much of modern technology would not exist without this discovery. But just as importantly, Millikan added to human knowledge, continuing a tradition stretching back to the dawn of humanity. I can't do better than summarizing my sentiments than by quoting the following passage from the great mathematician G.H. Hardy's 1940 essay, A Mathematician's Apology. And he said the following. I have never done anything useful. No discovery of mine has made or is likely to make directly or indirectly for good or ill the least difference to the amenity of the world. The case for my life then is this, that I have added something to knowledge and helped others add more. And that these somethings have a value which differs in degree only and not in kind from that of the creations of the great mathematicians or of any of the other artists, great or small, who have left some kind of memorial behind them. I hope you take these words to heart as deeply as I do. Thank you and good luck. That was really a quite wonderful speech, uh, Professor Farb, and uh, I think every scientist here understands exactly what you were talking about, including, I'm sure, many of our new graduates. We are fortunate this afternoon to have with us members of the Millar Brass Ensemble, who will perform a suite of Renaissance dances by the 16th century Flemish composer Tilman Susato. We have now come to the main business of the afternoon, the presentation of diplomas by Professor Pfefferman, Dean of the Division, and the Max Mason Distinguished Service Professor in Mathematics, to the graduates upon whom President Robert Zimmer conferred degrees at this morning's ceremony in the main quadrangle. Dean Pfefferman will be joined by these distinguished faculty members whom I'd like to introduce. Mr. Todd DuPont from uh, the Department of Computer Science and Mathematics, 
uh, Ms. May Wang, who is from the uh, Department of Statistics, uh, Ms. Margaret Gardell, who is a professor of physics, uh, Mr. Jonathan Rosner, a professor emeritus of physics, and Mr. Greg Lawler, Department of Statistics and Computer Science, who I have not had the pleasure of meeting, and I guess one senior who I missed altogether and got confused with Mae Wong. That's why I was short a chair. Uh, Ms. Yunki Kim from the Department of Physics, and pardon me, it's Ms. Mae Wong over there, statistics. Mr. Mr. Roger Lee from uh, the Department of Mathematics, uh, and of course, Dean Pfefferman. So now, do we have Mr. Deroney to start the line? I guess we don't. <laughs> step forward and be standing so that you can receive the uh, students as they come by. Uh, we ask that you hold your applause uh, until all the graduates have been presented. Uh, can we start the first student who should be Mr. Bai? Dean Pfefferman, it is my honor to present the graduates who have successfully completed the program of studies. Hold it, hold it, hold it, Mr. By. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Pfefferman, it is my honor to present the graduates who have successfully completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Division of Physical Sciences. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Science by the Board of Trustees. Mr. E. Bai. Receiving the Master of Science in Financial Mathematics. Now, yeah. <laughs> Michael Aaron Beck, Master of Science in Financial Mathematics. Yeah. Oh, could we refrain from uh, clapping until all the graduates have come through? I would greatly appreciate that. Mr. Rohan Sadish Bedekar, Master of Science from the Computer Science Professional Program. Mr. Krishna Bamidi, Master of Science in Financial Mathematics. Natalia Burakini, Master of Science in Financial Mathematics. Andrew Yu Chen Chang, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Ching Chan, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Sarah E. Lin Chang, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Zhao Zong Zhen, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Juing Zhen, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Pimanrat Chota Wadanakul, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. John Kalman Collins, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Greg Cook, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. 
Kai Lin Ding, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. James Vincent Diometti, the third, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Mo Long Dong, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Katra Zina Duna Jubix, Jupit, Jupis, Juski, pardon me, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. <coughs> Guy Robert Duval, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Gyan Shankar Dvavidi, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Max David Engelstein, Master of Science, Mathematics. Li Jin Fan, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Simeon Philippe, Master of Science, Mathematics. Ji Wen Gao, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Wei Gao, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Navreet Gill, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Ji Ji Yu Ha, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Mm -hmm. Wen Jing Ha, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Peter Hans Hirschbeck, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Jason J. Hahn, Master of Science, Chemistry. Xiaohao Hong, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Louis Hormes, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yu Hu, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Imrad Javid, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Ye Ji, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Nan Jiang, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Vahab Kapoor, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Andrew Karwowski, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Hei Sung Kim, Master of Science, Statistics, MS program. Ji Wan Kim, Master of Science, Statistics, Master's program. Lin Pin Pao, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Kyle Caro, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Matthew Ryan Leisinger, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Kai Lee, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. <coughs> An Chi Lee, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. <coughs> Tian Yi Lee, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yan Zhu Lee, Master of Science, Statistics Master's Program. Ximing Liang, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yan Shi Lin, Master of Science, Statistics. Robing Ling, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics.
Jin Liu, Master of Science, Financial <coughs> Mathematics. <coughs> Hu Chi Liu, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Zhou <laughs> Liu, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yan Jie Lei, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Jinji Yu Lu, Master of Science, Financial <coughs> Mathematics. <coughs> Zhou Tian Luan, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yi Wei Lo, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Oleg Lysenko, Master of Science, Physical Sciences Divisional Master's Program. Johan Victor Malti Valera, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Michael Masaki, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Bradford Keir Matheson, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Adamatios Stefanos Minaglu. Master of Science, Physical Sciences, Divisional Master's Program. Yiran Pong, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Giovanni Rattan, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Mahmoud Yosef Shama, Master of Science, Financial <coughs> Mathematics. Yeah. Vian Shao, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. <laughs> My favorite. Ben Ching Chen, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Jonathan Shi, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Ramnik Singal, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Benedict Suzlarek, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Heather Stoller, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Jun C. Su, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics Program. Ji Jing Sun, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. C.E. Tan, yeah. Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Adam Michael Tepper, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Noah Kevin Tilton, Master of Science, Computer Science Ma Professional Program. Mark Tortorello, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. John Robert Tram, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Konstantinon Vasilikas, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Chad Vogel, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Go Wei Wong, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Han Chi Wang, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Nan Wang, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Hao Wang, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Hao Xian Wei, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Lei Jin Wu, Wu, Master of Science, Statistics, Master's Program. Bing Chia, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. Byron Chia, 
Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Jin Ying Che, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Lu Shen She, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Wei Long Chu, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Zhou Ran Shu, Financial Math Master's Program. Men Yu Shu, Master of Science, Statistics. Si Wen Yang, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yu Yu, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Zhang Yuan, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Wan Su Jen, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yi Xing Zong, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yuan Pu Zhang, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yan Zhao, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yu, Yan Yu Zhao, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yu Qi Zek. Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Yixiao Zheng, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. Si Shen Zhu, Master of Science, Financial Mathematics. And last but not least, Cheng Yun Zhou, Master of Science, Computer Science Professional Program. So now we are going to present our candidates, or actually our graduates, with the degree of doctorate in philosophy. Dean Pfefferman, each of the graduates I now have the honor to present have attained scholarly distinction in his or her particular field of study and has prepared a dissertation which contributes to knowledge in his or her particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the Division of the Physical Sciences, I now present the recipients of the degree of Doctorate of Philosophy. I congratulate you on the completion of the degree of Doctorate of Philosophy, and I welcome you to the ancient and honor of the country. Rena Feugel Barber, Doctor of Philosophy, Statistics. Bridget Diane Karsten. Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. Francis J. Chung, Doctor of Philosophy, Mathematics. Haosheng Shuai, Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. Jonathan Joseph Foley IV, Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. Ross Brooke Gershik, Doctor of Philosophy, Computer Science. Joshua Abraham Grochow, Doctor of Philosophy, Computer Science. Hao Wan, Doctor of Philosophy, Physics. Nathan William Kraft, Doctor of Philosophy, Physics. Mm -hmm. Durong Se Wang, Huang, Doctor of Philosophy, Statistics. Justin Allen Modica, Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. Marissa Gerda Saunders, Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. Ruping Chen, Doctor of Philosophy, Mathematics. J. 
Jonathan David Stryker, Doctor of Philosophy, Physics. Arun Madhav Palapalil, Doctor of Philosophy, Physics. Dmitry Vovich Yusinov, Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. Tomin Thomas Raymond Weisgarber, Doctor of Philosophy, Physics. Brent Morehouse Werness, Doctor of Philosophy, Mathematics. Kaya Zhang, Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. Yi Zhu, Doctor of Philosophy, Chemistry. And now we've got applause for everyone. Now I am pleased to present Dean Robert Pfefferman, the Max Mason Distinguished Service Professor in Mathematics, with some final words to our graduates and to this company. Well, I want to welcome all of you here, uh, not just the graduates, but also uh, the best friends and the parents supporters of our graduates. You know, uh, this is such a very unusually happy occasion, uh, one of the happiest in life. Uh, it's one thing to have a happy occasion in which you run across a million dollars in the middle of the street, um, and I'm sure that is a, a somewhat happy and surprising occasion. On the other hand, you know, this represents such an enormous effort on the part of these graduates and such a successful one that I think it is a little bit of a different, a different category than that. This university, the University of Chicago, has the highest standards, and uh, it just is not an easy effort in order to graduate successfully with a higher degree from the University of Chicago. Um, in addition, um, I have to say that although uh, all of the disciplines represented at the university are uh, of the highest level, uh, in some sense, physical and mathematical sciences is rather unforgiving. That is to say, one knows when one can prove a theorem, when one uh, succeeds in a chemical experiment, uh, when one uh, understands uh, a physical uh, or mathematical phenomenon, uh, and there is really no mercy in the sense if one doesn't understand it, one is quickly informed of that, and uh, it's not a particularly happy occasion. So in addition to being at this very great university, the center of science and mathematics, historical level center, uh, these graduates have had to um, cope with the difficulties of a rather unforgiving uh, subject matter. So they, they really have achieved something very, very special. You know, you are joining, graduates, you are joining uh, now your fellow alumni of the Physical Sciences Division of the University of Chicago. They include um, one of our better graduates, Mr. Hubble, who many of you may have heard of in astrophysics. Those in mathematics or mathematical sciences may have heard of Alberto P. Calderon, um, and um, a co-founder of my field. Jim Cronin in physics, who is a Nobel Prize winner for the asymmetry of nature. Paul Cohen in mathematics, a uh, fields medalist, one of the great um, uh, mathematicians of, of his time, Sherry Rowland, a Nobel Prize winner in chemistry. So uh, it will be the case, I'm rather confident, that several of you here will make discoveries of the highest level that will influence uh, our future. Um, and uh, I, I think that um, taking heart to what uh, Professor Farb said, I think there will be those who will go on to become academics, who will uh, increase the basic knowledge that we have, there will be those who will um, uh, do basic research, which will, in good time, uh, have huge application to our society. I might add that, um, that uh, G.H. Hardy, who was proud of uh, not doing anything useful, 
Uh, today, uh, his discoveries in pure mathematics have the deepest application, most fundamental application in signal processing, in genetics, all around the map. So if he were here today, I would have the a pleasure or the, ta the unfortunate task of informing him that, his, that he's completely wrong in his self-assessment, and he needn't, uh, he needn't say that. So I think, um, you know, we're extremely proud of you, and I would like to take this occasion to also uh, mention another group that we're extremely proud of, namely those who have supported you. So I would hope that the graduates could maybe stand up now and give a round of applause to those in the audience who have supported them through this difficult and uh, important experience. I want to just say that you are now a proud alumni of the Physical Sciences Division of the University of Chicago. Please keep in touch with us. Uh, one of our uh, greatest um, treats is to keep track of your achievements, and there are going to be many, many of them. Uh, you will be involved in solving some of the most important problems of our time. You will be, many of you uh, in financial mathematics will be uh, determining how to hedge risk uh, and uh, hopefully not repeating some of the uh, unfortunate economic uh, trends of the recent past. Um, you will be, uh, those of you in chemistry and in physics will be figuring out hopefully how to do personalized medicine and uh, using genomics to cure disease. Uh, those of you in astrophysics uh, can uh, figure out dark energy and dark matter and some of the most fundamental mysteries of the universe. Whether you are doing pure research or whether you're doing the most applied, uh, uh, the applied research, we are extremely proud of you and please keep in touch with us. Thank you very much. Just a final word to the graduates today, of course, a quotation by a famous scientist, Albert Einstein, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is to not stop questioning, just as Professor Benson Farb mentioned earlier. This basically concludes the program. Uh, We'd like to thank you again for all joining today. We're going to have a reception immediately following, uh, probably about 20 steps out the door. Uh, and, uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to stand for the graduates <coughs> as they leave the hall and to join Dean Pfefferman and the representatives of the physical sciences faculty. And we want to say congratulations. Congratulations.